Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real, and I'm your host, Bob Callagher, joined in the studio today by our co-host, Job Torini, and our special real estate guest, Alex Anthony, with Lair Realty Partners in East Longmeadow. Welcome to the show, Alex. Thank you. So we asked you to come in and talk to us today a little bit about what what you do for, for sellers that's different than what the typical agent might do. Uh, you want to kind of walk us through what your process is with your with your sellers and and how you're different than the average real estate agent? Yes, absolutely. So what I offer sellers is a, a more comprehensive marketing position for their home. Mm-hmm. So as far as my motto is, packaging makes a difference. What I like to do is go into the property and kind of do a rough evaluation of how to make the property as mo- most attractive as possible. Right. And the way we do that is basically take some rough photos, and I discuss that with my stager, who is exclusive to me. Um, And we go over the house and determine how best to decorate it and and clear it of clutter so it's ready to go on the market. And is it something, do you and your stager actually clear the clutter, or is it something you instruct the homeowner on what would be best it kind of depends on the situation Mm -hmm. a lot of times i give them a list of instructions that they need to do in order to get the house ready um you know cleaning removing a lot of the personal effects and and artwork that they may have Mm -hmm. and then we kind of work together it depends on the family that's living there and and how busy their lifestyle is too right Right. so it's different for everybody really exactly yeah So once you've given them the instructions and you've taken the photos, what comes next? So my stage room, Michelle and I go over the house and we kind of determine the best way to market the house. If there's uh, an area that's not being enhanced, we can try to focus on that. So an example would be a walkout basement. We can try to make that more of a living space in a warmer environment Mm -hmm. or maybe a three season room that's heated. Uh, we can make that more of a cozy effect. And then we do um, we do a lot of little touches that make a difference in terms of the um, the interior appeal. Mm-hmm. Now, do you use a, a separate staging company that brings all the furniture in? No, actually, we have our own inventory that we use. We rent a storage unit and we have a ton of great stuff from, you know, really nice stores like Home Goods and you know, Marshall's, TJ Maxx. Um, We have, depending on the property, we have larger pieces of furniture. We have curtains. We have art, you know, wall art, everything Mm -hmm. you can think of. So what do you do? Do you take out all the furniture that's in the house? Well, if it's furnished, we work around their existing property. Mm -hmm. Um, And if it's empty, we can completely stage it. We try to focus on more of the living space and maybe... One of the bedrooms, just I feel that the kitchen, the living space, the family room, those are, those are the areas that we really have to kind of focus on. Mm-hmm. And what do you find most often needs to be minimized or brightened up, if you will, when you walk into a house? Are there certain areas that everybody sort of tends to neglect? Sure. Yeah. The curtains are a huge component, like brighter, longer curtains. Um, the way the house, you know, the cleaner the house is the newer it looks Mm -hmm. you know the less clutter the bigger it looks those are all really important aspects of the Mm -hmm. house what about homes that were built say 20 plus years ago where all the the trim boards and and window casings and everything those are all like dark stained or oaks oak orange oak or whatever you want to call it Uh, do you recommend that people actually go through the process of like painting all the millwork in the house, or is that just too much to undertake before you sell it? I try to minimize the efforts that the the homeowner has to do. Mm. So if it's, um, you know, I have a property listed right now that was rented to tenants, and I discussed it with the owner, and they actually took it upon themselves to freshly paint the house, which was great, you know, but I don't want them to spend uh, a lot of money on doing that. I think that the staging can really enhance the house, Mm -hmm. and people can see beyond you know, the, the physical. Right. So rooms that are stuffed with furniture, you probably take stuff out and stuff that's empty, you kind of add to it sort of thing. Right. And if it's too much stuff, I recommend getting a pod and, Mm. and and putting their personal property in the pod, like Mm. clear it out. And I've had many people do that. Are those expensive? The pods? They're not bad, honestly. I mean, a couple hundred bucks 
goes a long way yeah. to, to clear it out and get it ready. And then it's an easier move, really, mm. for people like that. And usually those are people with young children, and it's difficult to pack and, yeah. and do all that work. This is a, certainly a unique approach to selling homes. Do you find that this uh, the end result is faster turn times for sellers? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, you know, home staging, a uh, buyer comes into the property and they have um, an emotional connection with the po- property based on the, you know, interior decor. And that is a stronger connection than anything else. And that's going to make them linger and, and want that house. And we often have bidding wars. Um, we have multiple offers. I sell them quicker. I keep my listing terms really short, three months, usually for any listing. And if I can't sell it in three months, then there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, makes a big difference. Excellent. What about in terms of pricing to the consumer, someone looking to sell? Are they paying a real estate fee and an additional fee? Everything is included in the fee. And oh. and the commission fee is pretty much the same as any other agent. So there's no difference and there's no obligation for them. If I don't sell the house, they don't owe me a dime. It's and, just like oh, wow. any, any it, other listing. And with staging photography, all that? Yeah, I use our exclusive layer photographer who does the 3D tours. And uh, depending on the property, sometimes we do some drone footage as well. Um, you know, he does a great job. I think a 3D tour is awesome. It makes people walk through the house. They get a better feel of the space. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I get a great turnout at the open house and typically an offer that at that open house. Yeah. Oh, you're typically selling them at the open house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so usually we defer showings until the open house. And then at the open house, I'll get an offer or multiple offers. Wow. And, yeah. That's a unique approach too, because Very. it's it's pretty much saying we're confident in the property and yeah, you can come in. You can come in with the the general public and make a bid. Mm. So, yeah. And is that typical for the area, or is it more the uh, the houses that you're staging that you're seeing bidding wars on? There are bidding wars mm. right now. The lack of inventory is definitely present in in Western Mass as well. Mm-hmm. And when I work with buyers, I have some techniques that help us uh, obtain the house if mm. there's a multiple offer situation. But, um, you know, it does exist. And I think that the home staging absolutely helps, you know, that that frenzy of people who want to buy that house. They just immediately identify with the property. Right. Right. Uh, what would you say? You said that the photography professional photos are included in the, the price of the contract? Yes, everything's included. So my um, staging fee... There's no separate fee for the inventory in the house, nothing Mm -hmm. like that. We come in and we take care of it. Uh, We set it up. We break it down. So I go in um, with Michelle sometimes. Sometimes we just discuss and she gives me instructions depending on her schedule. I'll go in and set up the house. And I like to leave it like that until the appraisal. And then after the appraisal, I just take everything out. I think a couple things that are unique about this is not just the service itself and the pricing, but also this is something you see more happen in urban center cities. Mm -hmm. You don't see this kind of collaborative service in an area like Hamden County. So that, you know, that's a very big competitive advantage for consumers that are going to do business with you. Yeah, It makes a huge difference. And speaking of Hamden County, that's pretty much where you're based out of. You, You cover Hamden and Hampshire counties, correct? Yeah, I do a little bit in Franklin, too, but those are my primary areas that I focus on. Excellent. And you said you work with with buyers as well as sellers? I do, yep. Um, A lot of buyers today want... So first-time home buyers have noticed a trend where they are able to see beyond, you know, the actual structure and what it could potentially be, but... Anybody who's kind of upgrading, I feel like they have difficulty in seeing, you know, beyond the cosmetics and what they can do to enhance the property. Mm-hmm. Um, they just kind of want it to be done. like Right. Maybe because they already did the, yeah, the exactly. work on the first house. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it's interesting that you say that, though. You're seeing the first-time buyers actually being more realistic with what they're going to get these days. Because for a while, even when the, the market heated up, it seemed like everybody was still expecting to walk into a beautiful house with granite countertops and remodeled bathrooms regardless of the price point. Yeah, I've noticed that sort of 
window opening up a little bit more where people are realizing they have to do a few things here and there and they're getting, you know. And I think that happens after they've lost a few opportunities with other houses or, you know, their expectations have just been, you know, had to be adjusted really with what's available. Do you still see buyers thinking that they can go in and lowball In the beginning. Yeah. They do, and then they get outbid sometimes, and then, you know, they start to come around. Mm. Um, You know, it's just the way the market is right now, and I explain that to them all the time. I feel that the values are obviously being driven by the lack of inventory, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you have to really be aggressive if you want that property. So we try a few different techniques. Um, Obviously, I try to have a good relationship with the co-broke and make sure that they know I'm going to be, um, you know, very pleasant to work with and responsive. Mm-hmm. And we, I instruct the uh, the buyer. Oftentimes, a personalized letter does make a difference, especially if it's a homeowner who's lived there for 40 years and raised their family there. Mm-hmm. You know, if they generate a letter that has really specific details about how they see their family. And sometimes I actually write the letter on their behalf to mm-hmm. try to make it more personalized. That really, um, you know, makes the the seller feel, wow, this is somebody who really loves my house and they're going to take care of it and they're going to raise a family here and, you know, mm-hmm. they're going to love it the way I loved it. So that can make a difference. It's not just the bottom line. Right. Um, and then also... Instead of just blindly overbidding, I like escalation clauses in the provisions, which uh, puts a very specific uh, dollar amount that they will exceed uh, another competing offer by Mm -hmm. up to a certain cap. So that way we're not blindly just throwing out like this uh, over asking number Mm -hmm. on an offer. Um, And that way I know that my client is comfortable with where it stops. You know, they don't have to go over a certain budget. Do you see a lot of uh, cash offers in yes. that area? Yes, actually. I've had um, three cash offers this year, cash deals that wow. have, have closed. Yeah. People that were flipping or people that just had the money? To just not people that have money. Wow. Yeah. That's very, very interesting. <laughs> Do you see a lot of flipping out there? I mean, it seems like everybody's flipping these days. I see a lot of flipping. It's uh, a little bit worrisome in a way because mm. I feel like that's kind of... Um, affecting you know the market right um skewing values a little bit but yeah i do see a lot of that right is it people that are buying rundown properties and rehabbing them or is it more people trying to make a quick buck it's both i feel Mm. like yeah some of them i mean i've seen flips where they just painted everything gray and that's considered a flip (laughs) and then i've seen uh you know people who really put in new new, you know do nice work too like really nice finishes and it seems like the best deals for those people are off market and they um have you know their ear to the ground Mm. those those investors and know the you know elderly that are maybe downsizing and they scoop it up right that kind of thing so what's the the typical homeowner or home buyer first time buyer buying in in your area as far as what you're used to seeing like location uh not so much location like uh is it capes ranches splits oh, okay. colonials and and kind of what the price point is you know kind of want to let everybody that's listening hear what the difference is out west versus what they're seeing you know inside 128 or even inside 495 these days i've seen a lot of ranches this year mm-hmm. for first-time home buyers and i think that it's um you know, with the capes, especially with people that are have like really very young children and families, they want to be like all on one level, mm-hmm. and they can't really afford the colonials right. uh, a lot of times, at least in the area I'm working in. So that's like the, the 250 plus threshold right. usually, and these people are in the 180 to 230 range right. kind of thing. So they're usually settling on ranches, um, things like that. Older that's- or more updated. For that, mm, at that price point. Like they're not updated at that okay. price point. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. As it used to be, you know, especially if you were even out on, on the 495 belt, everybody assumed that once you go past Worcester, all of a sudden you can buy huge houses for real short money, and it doesn't seem like that's the case anymore. Nope. No. I don't think that is anywhere. <laughs> maybe no, down there s- isn't. <laughs> maybe <laughs> like down south. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm starting to wonder. I mean, Florida's the same way now. You used to be able to get a lot of houses in Florida and... Now you can't anymore. It's right. kind of crazy the yeah. way things have changed. Um, do you have the same issues in the western part of the state as far as first-time buyers having shortages of, of homes that, that are affordable? Or 
Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So I convince my people. Sometimes they're just uh, not in, even interested in going to see the house based on what's uh, online. And I said, you really have to go and see the house and right. see the space because not everybody markets a property the way I do when they're a listing agent and it doesn't like show as well as you see online. Right. You have to go in and check it out and see what could be um, you know, updated to really make you comfortable. Let's look at the space and the location and then go from there. Right, right. So I'm going to give out some information. If, you, if you're listening right now and you'd like to talk to Alex Anthony from Lair Realty Partners about listing or buying anywhere in uh, the western part of the state, particularly in Hamden and Hampshire counties, uh, you can reach her at 413-949-1619. Again, it's 413-949-1619. And before we wrap up, we've just got about a minute or so left, Alex. Anything that you could give for advice, a, a quick tip for, for people that are getting ready to sell their houses, something they could do to kind of prep for it? Right, yeah. If you, you love your dog and you have a painting of your dog on the wall, you know, <laughs> that may not appeal to everybody. So just try to keep it objective and keep it as neutral as possible so that they can imagine themselves there. And that's really depersonalizing the property. Right. You know. Excellent. So I'm going to give out your contact info one more time. It's... Alex Anthony at Lair Realty Partners in East Longmeadow. Uh, you cover Hamden and Hampshire counties and the surrounding areas. And if you'd like to reach Alex to talk about buying or selling, you can call her at 413-949-1619. Again, it's 413-949-1619. Thanks for joining us on the show today, Alex. Well, thank you for having me. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this.